Hello, hello. Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Let me just do some last second uh, connections. All right, my audio is good. Sounds like my audio is good right here. All right, I got three cameras, so I'm just trying to sync them all together. Let me see if we're good to go. Oh. Just, yep, looks good. All right. Happy Saturday, everybody. Welcome to Romero Threads on YouTube, where it's all about embroidery. Today, we are going to digitize, hoop, and embroider. Uh, the three triangles of embroidery, we are going to uh, digitize, hoop, and embroider the USA emblem for the national team. So I just made it on a hat right here. So to show you a little sample in a bit, I, I'll do a little zoom up. All right, but uh, came out very, very nice. I just did one uh, right before we started right now, just to make sure we were good to go. All right, so let me see if I could pull up the, the design real quick. Give me one sec. All right. right. I'll pull up the design real quick. We got it right here. And all right. So today, okay, this is uh let's see if I can zoom that in. All right, so today we are going to digitize. We are going to hoop and embroider live the USA emblem. All right, so uh, very nice. And we're actually preparing for this year, the World Cup. Okay, so it's a big event. I'm always excited every year, every four years when that happens. See, all right, so. All right, all right. Um, so I got it on paper right here. But, all right, so real quick. Let's do some quick good mornings. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you. Uh, good morning, Bevy. Bevy Jean. All right. Ready for Education Saturday. TMG Custom Design. All right. Let's the learning begin. Yep. We are going to learn today. Good morning, Barb from North Central Minnesota. All right. I know the weather is getting a whole lot better now. All right. So handmade creation. Good morning. All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning to everybody that's also catching us on the replay. Okay. Uh, I know we start pretty early. Okay. Um, but for me, it's always better to start early. That way, uh, Saturday is my most productive, my favorite day of the whole week. So I like to start it off very early. And we always have the benefit and the luxury of watching it on the replay. Right. So even if you catch us live, if you're kind of doing two things at the same time, it's always good practice to come back and uh, check us out on the replay. Okay. Um, all right, right. So let's go ahead. Let's look at our design for today. All right. Uh, let's kind of analyze. I always like analyzing artwork before I go into the digitizing phase, uh, just so I can tell you the the who, what, where, when, how, why we're doing stuff, okay? Sometimes, uh, a lot of times, right, we're always being told, okay, you got to do it this way. And sometimes we don't know why we're just following, okay? We're just following uh, rules. But if we kind of understand the rules, we know when to break the rules. Uh, and we know when to, uh, when we could kind of get out of uh, normal regulations and kind of, uh, do some other, other, uh, other choices that we have. Okay. So today, okay. Today I want to focus on, um, an emblem for hats and polos. Okay. Hats and polos. So we're talking about, uh, I always like hats and polos because we're talking about a very, uh, good size that we're working with. So here, 
we're looking height wise anywhere height okay anywhere between three to maybe 2.5 or even two inches okay so anywhere between three to two inches is always a, a safe space for uh, hats and polo shirts, okay? That's why I like it so much because a lot of times, uh, if you're working on a big, big design, okay, it takes forever for it to finish. And these, you're kind of knocking them out pretty quick. Uh, when, when we're in this kind of category here, stitches, we're, we're between, uh, I would say 3,000. So maybe maximum, okay, for a heavy, heavy shirt, 12,000 stitches, okay? Let me zoom in a bit. All right, this is just kind of side notes that uh, kind of going, going over this type of uh, size that we're working with, all right? This picture here is a, a, it's a little blown up just so you could kind of see what's going on. Uh, here, anytime we're analyzing artwork, Okay. Anytime we're any, any, analyzing artwork, okay. For so even to start the digitizing, digitizing uh, process, I like to break it down into three parts. Okay, one, two, three. All right. So when we break it down and we kind of uh, analyze our design, okay. Uh, and usually these three items that I'm going to talk about right now, they're interchangeable. So sometimes you want to do it in this order, but sometimes you change it around. Okay. So I would say uh, we would say uh, the sequence, sequence of order. Sequence of order, like what goes first. Okay. So if we're looking at this, if you were to, if you were given this project here to do, okay, what would be the order? that you would stitch it in, okay? What would you stitch first, all right? So let's say we're going one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say we're doing six things, okay? Are you going, we have this background, okay? So let's label them. We have the background, so the white background, white background. We have the blue border, blue border. We have the USA, blue USA, okay, which is broken up into three words or three letters. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven red stripes. All right. So is there anything else that we have? Uh, not right now, right? But so in what order would you stitch this out first? Would you do the, the stripes first? USA, you kind of work your way out. Um, obviously, if you are going to do a white fill stitch, okay, it's obviously that would have to be number one. That would be the first thing you can do, right? Um, so kind of the sequence, that's the sequence of order. What's going to go first, okay? And usually when you're digitizing, when we're digitizing, we want to we wanna stay in that order. And of course, we could rearrange it at the very end. Okay. Number two, we want to trace, of course, after we know what order we're going to go with, we want to get a good trace. So we have to trace our artwork. Okay. And tracing is just, you know, outlining, right? Outlining how we're going to go about. So you should have an idea how you want to trace. Okay. And we're going to, once we get into the tracing portion, You'll see that in this situation, all right, for this, for example, this having a curve, okay, we got to make certain adjustments on how we usually uh, trace our artwork, all right? So here we have a sharp turn and it's connected with a curve, all right? So in this type of situ situation, we kind of, we, we got to do special things to it, okay? Uh, also, when we're tracing our artwork, uh, you're following the sequence of order. You you want to know. You're trying to you're trying to follow the sequence just so at the very end there's not a lot of work when we're uh, putting everything together. And then third, the third item, digitizing process is the settings. Okay, we're talking about um, 
first, what kind of uh, uh, kind of stitches? So what kind of stitches? All right, and then of course settings. We're talking about density, density underlay. Okay, all that stuff that we don't really see. Okay, because it's all underneath our artwork, but it plays a vital role. Okay, it plays a vital role. All right, so this is all part of the analyzing phase. All right, I like to analyze. I like to analyze artwork before we go into uh, the digitizing, all right? Just so I could have a plan, I kind of have an idea. And also my notes. So if I'm working with a client and I have these notes, I file these notes, okay? I file these notes. So let's say six months or a year, or maybe two years from now, if they ever uh, need something, um, they need a change or they need some, you know, or I need to go back to reference uh, a specific design. I can always go back and I could read the notes that I had and see what I was thinking. All right. Oh, let me fix the zoom. All right. We're good here. All right. So this is kind of like a big picture digitizing process. All right. And then I got this one here. This is how I usually print it out. I usually uh, bring down the opacity of the picture. Now, when I'm digitizing, I could kind of have an idea how do I want to uh, lay my stitches. So I could just do a rough draft on hand, okay, and see how do I want my stitches, all right? So kind of giving myself an idea. And the big thing here, you can also figure out, do you want to do fill stitches? Do you want to do sand stitches, all right? So usually with letters, okay, letters, we're always working with sand stitches. Sand stitches. All right. Uh, unless the letters are too big, then we're going to go fill. But since we're going since since we're down below on a 2.5 uh, size, we should be good to go. All right. Let me see. Um, of course, these stripes. OK. Satin. Fill if we want to do a fill. OK. If we want to do a fill, of course, tatami. Tatami. Right. Uh, border. So we have a border here, satin, okay? We gotta decide how how wide of a satin do we want, okay? Uh, usually something like this, uh, if we were to measure it, we'll measure it right now when we get into the software. Uh, right here, it looks pretty small, but I like to go maybe three millimeters wide, okay? So this is just uh, kind of stuff that we could kind of include on our notes, all right? And then we see that our angles, Okay, our angles of our sand stitches are, are kind of at a slope here, right? They're not just straight. We're at a slope and then we know it ends over here. So we know we're gonna have to curve. Okay, and then here starts like at this angle and it ends at this angle. So there's really no curving. And then same thing here, all right. And this is just mirrored from here, all right. Uh, we're gonna talk about S's are always um, special, it's like a special letter here, okay? So we'll talk about this one, all right. The U, uh, pretty straightforward, all right? We're gonna look at this area here where we have a long stitch right here. We might wanna do something about that, all right? But overall, Okay, uh, big thing here, right? Feel, okay, if you were to be designing this, okay, would you wanna do a fill stitch as the white or would you, or do we have another option? Okay, do we have another option, all right? Which is, okay, we could do an applique. So instead of a fill or applique, Okay, so of course a fill, if we were to fill this background, this white background, we're looking at 4,000 extra stitches. Okay, 4,000 stitches, I would say approximately. Okay, approximately 4,000 stitches. But if we do applique, right? 
it's zero or approximately, right? We there's always something that we gotta add for applicant zero. All right, so we'll talk about that. Uh, actually, the way I want to do it today, I want to digitize this three different ways. All right, uh, let's let's digitize, digitize three ways. So we'll do it first way. Okay, first way we'll do it as a with a fill background, a white fill background. Number two. Applicate, we'll applicate this white. Applicate, background. And then number three, we'll do a combination of both. Okay, we'll do a fill, half fill, plus applicate. All right, which looks pretty cool. All right. Okay, so three different ways to do it. Uh, the hat that I was wearing this morning. Let's see if I could go back to the camera. Uh, oops. Hold on. All right. The hat. I know I'm a little zoomed out. Let me zoom in a little. A little zoomed out. All right. So I made this. I made the design here in the morning. All right, so which way do you think I did it here? So out of the three that we just talked about. All right, so let me just see. This is straight off the the hat. The hat uh, so I, yeah, I even have the hat one on. Hold on. Let me zoom in. Let me show you right here. I haven't even really looked at it too, too much. Take it off right here. All right. So this way here. All right. I actually went with number two, the applique background. OK, this one here. I think it came out looking real nice. All right. This is the hat that I wear every week. Right. I've had the I had, I've had it blank in the front for a while. So this is like the perfect design put it up right here all right so this is applique style all right so it came out real good uh i have the the twill that i use is the the heat the heat pressure sensitive okay so i can still um i still have to uh hit it with the heat press just so it could lock in but it's good to go all right so that'll be a uh, method number two all right the applique background all right um All right. So, of course, let's go to the most fun part, which is the digitizing phase. All right. All right. Um, let's say some good mornings. All right. Got a lot of familiar faces in the house. All right. Good to see everybody. All right. Looks like everybody's excited to be here. I think it's a very good project today because Every time we see a uh, every time we see a, a design or design is given to us, sometimes the customer will be sometimes the customer doesn't really know what they want. Okay, they don't know the best way to go about it. And the more options that we know, the uh, the more ways that we see different types of artwork. Okay, the better the better the advice we could always give our customers. Okay, uh, sometimes the custom the customer will give us the benefit of the doubt because we do this week in, week out, okay? So sometimes it's good to experiment with different methods to uh, digitizing and embroidering certain projects, all right? So uh, here, okay, I think this is a perfect example just because the emblem, right? Especially for sports, the background, okay? A lot of sports, a lot of teams, uh, a lot of organization, they use that border, okay? That border that we have here so really if you have that border locked in and 
you know the difference between how an applique would look, how a, a full 100% fill stitch or a half applique, half uh, fill stitch looks, okay? You can you could kind of give options, all right? And of course, we're always up against a big, big setting, which is uh, the number of stitches. So this one here, my applique hat has about 3,000 stitches, 3,500, 3, okay? Versus full, full stitches, we're looking at eight, 9,000 stitches, all right? So just time, time wise, okay, time wise, you could save a lot of time uh, going applique uh, versus full stitches, all right? But sometimes a customer, they want full stitches, okay? So we, you always got to tell them or you always got to know that it's going to take more time to go about completing something like that, all right? Um, all right, uh, let's say some good mornings. We got good morning, Linda, okay, from SoCal. I know it's super early over there. All right, youngsters, good morning. All right, Janet, good morning. Marisa from Southern California. All right, all right. Uh, just on a side note, next year, I'll be moving to uh, San Diego, okay? So next year, next year, this time, I'll be in San Diego. All right, just FYI, okay? So uh, I'm gonna get stationed in uh, San Diego. So I'm pretty excited for that. So I'll ride out this whole year uh, here in uh, Northern Illinois. And then starting next year, I'll start making the transition to San Diego. All right, all right. Um, all right, we got Sunrise Tactical Gear from Washington State. All right. And we got uh, Nick Blummer, North, North Dakota. All right. Maxine, good morning from Oregon. All right, right, right. Sidar, good morning. Good to have you. All right, right. All right, let's go ahead. Let's, let's go into the fun part, which is the digitizing phase. All right. At any time, if you have any questions, just put a cue next to it. Um, Put a queue next to your question and we'll take care of that. All right, let me, let me I see a queue right here. Uh, hold on. Where'd it go? Oh, there we go. All right, Barb, where did you purchase the tool? This is from Tool USA. Um, bam, bam, very nice. All right. And then um, today we'll have this file. It'll be for download here. Uh, I'll probably just have it, I'll probably just have it available. Let me see, let me pull this up. I'll have this file available uh, probably for a week, okay? I'll probably have it up for a week for everybody that's watching right now and on the replay. Um, one thing you can do with this uh, file, you can also you can also delete the, the actual design and, and use the background as a template, okay? Because there's a lot, a lot of uh, sports teams and everything that uses kind of the frame of this border. All right. Of course, this is all for educational purpose. Uh, the purpose to uh, download the files is to download them and study. OK, you can always study reverse engineer, see all the settings, see all the little minor details and tweaks that I kind of do. OK, uh, because sometimes we don't want to we don't want to trace and we don't want to digitize exactly the way the design is. Sometimes we got to go and compensate, undercompensate, or overcompensate in certain scenarios, okay? So uh, feel free later today, I'll put that up for uh, download, and then you could stitch it out. You can see which is your preferred method. Do you like the applique? Do you like the fill stitch? Or do you like the half and half, okay? Uh, for today, I am gonna stitch out one of our three. Uh, you let me know what you wanna see. Do you wanna see me do the applique the way I did this one? Okay, I like the way this one, uh, this one is very fun project um, and long run, okay, long run. I think it's a very good project to knock out real quick uh, versus a full complete stitch like that. All right, all right, let's go ahead. Um, all right, let's get, let's, let's do a question real quick. Youngster, if you haven't started, you're doing your own digitizing, what is the best way of finding someone that can be trusted to do it correctly. All right, this is a real good question, right? Let me, let me kind of get into this question real quick because 
Uh, when I started, okay, when I started, I didn't know how important digitizing was. Okay, I thought uh, I thought anybody could digitize. I thought you know you send it to somebody that claims to be a digitizer, and they should be able to send you back something that's that's uh, gonna work. All right, but that's not always the case. Uh, I was struggling my first couple designs just because I did not find somebody that had it, you know, that knew 3D Puff, you know, real good. What I did, I had one complicated design and I send it out to like five different digitizers and then they all send it back. And I kind of saw who, who kind of did it better, uh, different ways that different digitizers went about. Okay. Um, and then I started using, and then I went about like that. Okay. You always want to talk to people. I think the best way is to talk to other companies, see which digitizers they use. Okay. I think that's the best way to get it because you're getting a uh, recommendation. Okay. Uh, instead of the, the last thing you want to do is somebody recommending themselves. Okay. If you find a digitizer that's out there recommending themselves, first of all, a real good digitizer is not really promoting because other people are promoting for him or her. Okay. So that's kind of, uh, that's kind of key. Number one, if a digitizer, if you find a digitizer that, that is pushing their work like real heavy, you got to question that because real good digitizers, they don't have to do all that. People are doing it for them. All right. I always recommend my, my digitizer. Uh, Vitor. Okay, Vitor. He's probably the best of the best. Okay. You could go around looking for all different types of people, or you could just save yourself, go to Vitor, and he's probably the best of the best. Especially we do heavy uh, 3D puff. Okay. Sometimes very time consuming to do uh, five to 10 projects, right? So you got to send that out. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, if you are going to look for a digitizer, I would send out uh, the same file, make it something that's, you know, a little bit complicated, send it out to different digitizers and see which one sends it back. The neatest, lowest stitch, okay, the most efficient. All right. All right, cool. Um, all right, all right. We'll take care of this question, this one here. I'll show you when I get to the machine. Romero, what parameters did you have to change on to do three inch cap? I changed the Y axis. Yeah, Y axis to uh, an 80. Yeah, I put an 80, 85, I think. We'll, we'll look at the, the settings there. All right, all right. Okay, yep, Barb, I agree with you. Vitor digitizing is awesome. If you're looking for a digitizer, if you wanna save yourself headache with going through different uh, digitizers and doing all that heavy lifting, all right, I'll tell you right now that Vitor, best of the best. All right, best website too. He has an easy website that you can send us stuff. All right, let's go ahead. Let's get into the fun part, the nitty gritty of digitizing. All right, let me see if we got good right here. All right, full screen. All right, let's go ahead. I, uh, I have my uh, file here, of course. I always want to measure my design. Okay, this is always like routine. Okay, we're gonna click down from corner to corner or from bottom to top. We're looking at 2.5, all right? That's the sweet spot that I like to work with, all right? And then um, once we got that, we could just lock this in, lock, and let's dim it down so we can see our stitches. All right, so I'm gonna digitize it three different ways. And it looks like, um, some of y'all want to see the applique style, all right? So we'll do the applique, all right? Just like my hat, okay? Um, all right. Oh, uh, but let's go ahead. We'll do the we'll do the fill stitch first, okay? Let's do fill stitch first. So the way I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do this border, okay? Digitize close shape. And one thing here, I'm gonna use the most basic tools, okay? I like using the most basic tools, even though this program has very advanced tools, all right? Sometimes you don't need all that stuff, okay? Sometimes just with the most basic straight lines, okay? As you can see, our shapes here, we don't really have any real complicated shapes here, okay? Okay, 
Um, I'm just going to make a quick trace around. All right. And once you get good at uh, tracing designs, all right, pretty much every design is, is pretty straightforward from there on. All right, so right now I just created this line here. Okay, with this line I could uh, I could do a lot of things. All right, with this background thing, but I'm gonna duplicate this and turn this into my fill to Tommy. Bam. Okay, H. So I could work on my settings. Oops. Want to grab this angle? What I want to do with this angle? Bring it down to a 15 degrees, and I'll tell you why. 15 degrees is always so popular with fill stitches. All right, uh, 15 degrees, what that does, as you see the, the lines, they're at an angle here. So when I do my border, let's do this border here. My, ah, hold on. When I do this, color this black. This line, right? These this line that I just created right here. Hold on. This line right here. Okay. By doing it at a 15 angle, you see that our stitches are not perpendicular. Okay. They're kind of grabbing each other at an angle. All right. And usually if you get holes, if you're getting holes in your designs, like if the stitches are pulling pulling each other and you're getting gaps, okay, it might be just because your angles are a little off. So by us going at a 15 degree angle, okay, it avoids this border, satin border, uh, picking too much of our tatami. Let me give you an example here. Uh, let me go uh, special. Let me go at zero degrees. Okay. If I were to go at zero degrees, these, okay, let's put the dots here. Every time the needle comes in here, okay, it'll open up this area here, okay? This area here that's running perpendicular, it'll pull it and you'll see a gap, okay? So sometimes if you see gaps in your designs, it's just that our angles are perfectly made so our stitches could pull each other, all right? If that kind of makes sense. All right, so let me go back to a 15. All right. All right, so, so far, we got our background and our border. Okay, let me just make this, make this a white. All right, bam, bam. All right, let's go ahead. Let me hide this. I'll, I'll hide these two. Okay, we'll go back and, and adjust settings and all that stuff at the end, but let's hide this. Let's do the lettering, okay. Lettering, uh, Almost straightforward, almost straightforward. All right, we're gonna use uh, the column A, which every software has column A, okay. And let's go into metrics. Here, reason why I like this column A, because when you click, you're kinda, you, you see how big your, uh, your stitches are, okay. So it's telling me 3.5, okay, easily doable. All right, here, okay, here, the, these rounded areas that we have here, okay, sometimes can be a headache, okay, but right now we know we got to make three clicks, okay, we, we, we need to round this, round this one here, and right when it goes straight, right where it goes straight, okay, so it's like a three point click here to, to make this rounded portion here, okay, then we're here at this corner now. Let me show you real quick. You can do it this way. Okay, we could do it the, the, the normal way, all right, from corner to corner. But let me tell you what happens here. Okay, what happens here, if we were to do it like this, this corner here, it's gonna, it's gonna kinda get a little wonky right here because we have a very sharp corner here. Okay, even though we got our short stitches turned on, okay, we're looking at a distance of six and a half. 
All right. But what's happening is our angles is going to have a quick shift going this way and then moving on up. Okay. So what you could do, okay, H, what you could do, uh, let's just start this over again. All right. So what you could do is break it up into two pieces. Okay. And sometimes a lot of this stuff, uh, you could experiment with different uh, scenarios. Here, since it's flat, it's not a big deal. Where it could be a big deal is if we're going um, 3D puff. All right. But here, what you can do, instead of it making the turn, you could kind of um, break it up into pieces. So one like this. And then throw that long one. We'll start it here. Here. Okay. All right. So it looks like this. Okay. And what that does, it, it, it allows us to transition from a normal angle. So going from a normal sand stitch and then transitioning on up okay so as you can see our angle comes from one side and then it shifts to the other side so we don't have a drastic angle change okay so it kind of blends in a bit all right all right um so that's for the u the s okay one thing that i like to do we kind of set this up right now uh, let's say underlay, okay, center run, um, yeah, zigzag. You could put a center run with a zigzag, one zigzag, that should be enough. And then here, H, what, so here the, the it has you starting your, your stitch here in the corner. I like to put it somewhere, hide it, okay, somewhere in the middle just so we don't have a obvious um, stitch right there, tie-in stitch. Hold on, let me turn off these other cameras. I'll burn the battery. All right. Bam, bam. All right, let's do the S, okay. Uh, so here, instead of just, going from a high angle, okay? So let me just show this as an example. Instead of going here and then turning my way around through the S, okay, the way I wanna do it. Uh, let's keep this. All right, I'm just going to keep a, oh, this is where we have our, our curve here and a tight pivot here. Okay, so we're going to do the same three, the same three pieces on this corner. All right, so it looks like a, uh, like a knee right here. Okay, here we have sharp to sharp. Okay, so it's just click, click. Then here we have a rounded corner connected with a sharp corner on the other side. Okay, so another three piece here. It's like a three step process to make this part. So it looks like a knee, a knee band aid. All right, we come here. And what you're looking for, okay, here I, I got a straight line going. You want to know where that curve starts moving, that's where you're going to click. That's your first one. And then the center of your curve is your second click. And then wherever this line starts to turn, that's where you want to get. Okay, so we're just doing those, those clicks in combination. All right. And it's just a lot of repetition.
Yep, get that good curve right there. So a solid us three step process. Then here, um, we'll finish it like the way we started it. All right, cool, cool. H, put a H. I want to start, so I don't want to start right in this corner. I want to start right here in the bottom. And I want to end. Where's my red? This is my ending point. I want to end here. I want to end like in a in an area that's kind of, that has a, a good amount of stitches going on the same direction, just so that tie out stitch won't be too obvious. All right. I don't worry. I I don't like to make our tie off here at the very end because then it's going to be too obvious. Okay, that we have a tie off there. All right, bam. All right, so the S, pretty straightforward. Okay, A, okay, of course, A's are always a two-step process because we have the bar here. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a line just to walk my way through here. Then, create the bar here. H, we can pull this back a bit. All right, now let's trace. On this one, I'm just going to make the A go all the way through here. Okay, and then we got that same three step process here with these corners. And this just corner to corner. Then here, we kind of start curving our way through. That's fine like that. Bam, all right, we're looking good. H. Let's just make sure. So we're going from here to here. Final H. We want to start right here where we end off. H. Yeah, end off here, here. Okay. So USA, let's see. Bam, we got it right there. All right. Uh, all right, we're doing good with questions. Let me know if y'all have any questions. This part here, pretty straightforward, right? Pretty straightforward. Then our bars. Okay. Uh, what we want to do with our bars, we just want to make sure to check our length. All right. All right, so we're close to three millimeters. Okay, so we're doing good right there. Have no problem with these bars. But these bars are... Uh, here, we know we have a curve. So right before it curves, I want to click right there. Then start making my curves. All right. So real straightforward. We always want to use the most minimum amount of clicks and nodes. So here I have two, four, six. All right. Then a lot of this. It's going to be mirrored, so once we do like three or four, then we should be able to copy and paste. All right. We're going to click. Click. Bam. And then here, okay, now this is where we start making some judgment calls. All right. This distance here, this little corner here, 1.7, all right. Now if we're going down here, it's like 0.7, okay. Uh, to get this detail, you pr it, it probably requires two pieces of thread, 
okay? Uh, I'm not gonna include this minor detail because I think it, it'll actually take away from the design with like two little pieces of thread hanging out. I think it'll look better by just going straight thread here, okay? And then here, in order to emphasize this pointy area, okay, I'm gonna start it from right there. Just so we could see it a little bit more clear, okay? Because this is what we this is what we're seeing right here, okay? At this one to one, okay, we're seeing it at that. All right, now. Put a little color into our. All right, what we could do here: one, two, three. Select those three, duplicate it, uh, and then we're going to mirror it. Mirror by reference line. Okay, I know my reference line is this center here. All right, so I just mirrored it. Mirror, mirrored it. Now, select those three. One, two. Three. Just give it a push it a little to the side. All right. Now we got a perfect one right there. All right. Now we select them in order that we want to stitch them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then just place some sequence by selects. All right. Now, since we're doing, since this is going to be applique, we can go from left to right. All right, it's no big deal. Sometimes if you're getting registration problem, you could go from the center, this one here, work your way out, and then work your way out this way, okay? This shouldn't be too much of an issue, okay, with this design, but more dense, more complicated designs, you might wanna go from the center on out. All right. All right. Um, so let's see what we got on hide all. All right. Uh, black, blue, let's put the correct colors now. All right, so pretty straightforward, this one, okay, pretty straightforward. Now to make it applique, okay, let's let's go ahead, let's turn this into applique here. Um, so of course, when we're working with applique, what we could do, let me, um, Go ahead, duplicate this. Just so I don't lose that. All right. Let me just group it up. Oh, wait. Let me just group this in case I got to move it again. All right. So, applique. Uh, we're going to do a lot of the same stuff. Okay, but delete. Uh, of course, take away that background. Okay, and here. With our, uh, we're gonna cop duplicate this twice. One, two, and we're gonna turn these into just regular run stitches. Okay. So the first one, first stitch here that I just made, I'll color that uh, this purple one. That'll be our placement stitch, and then we need a cut stitch. I'll make that black. Okay. Run stitch doesn't really matter the size of it. Stitch value two point five. That's fine. This cut stitch, I like to make it two or sometimes even smaller just so I could cut it. It's easier to cut when the stitches are a little uh, tighter. Okay, T, T, T. All right. Um, and so that's one, two. Let's go ahead, let's duplicate this one here. Uh, because what I want to do, if we go half and half, okay, if we do a half and half, let's say we want to do applique with half a fill stitch, okay. So that's that's usually pretty popular also. Uh, ungroup this. So here I'll select the uh, the fill stitch, the white portion. Okay, spacing length. What we want to do is increase our spacing. Okay, so let's see what I'm talking about here. If we zoom in to our fill stitch, 
let's say we want to go, uh, we want to space these out, all right? So let's go 0.8. Okay, so we spaced out our fill stitch. So it's not as tight anymore. And if we're doing white applique with white thread on top of it, all right, actually looks pretty good. All right, bam, bam. So we have three ways, okay? We have the applique here, okay? Which I'll put a replay right now so we can see everything that's going on. All right, actually, let me replay it right now. Um, all right. This here is the applique way. Okay, so it'll do a, uh, hold on, let me stop, let me stop it here at the trim. All right, let's start again. So first, hold on. let's play it here. Okay, it should stop at the, at the cut. Let's see if it stops it. No, it didn't stop again. All right, hold on. Trim. All right, I'll control it right here. All right, so first here at the applique, it'll do the it'll do the the placement stitch. Once we put our placement stitch, we put our twill on top of that, and then it's gonna run that this stitch on top of it, our cut stitch. Then we cut it, so we take it off the hoop. Okay. Then we do our uh, sand stitch. Then we do our lettering. Then the bars, bam, okay. So that's the very straightforward applique way, okay. If we're doing a um, fill stitch, okay, of course we're gonna fix up all these settings here, okay. But we do the fill first, then our border, okay. Sometimes, some people like to do the border to last, all right. It's all preference, but I think putting it right there is pretty good. USA, then bars, okay. And then, if we're doing half and half, okay, actually what we're going to do here, let me, um, I got, I got to copy and paste our cut stitches. All right, so it'd be like this. Oops, oh, not that. All right, it would it would do the cut stitch and then it do the but the main thing is this one here. All right, so what I want to do, I actually have a uh, I have a stitch out of our three different designs. So let me go up. Let me pull it up here on the camera. Give me one sec. All right, hold on, let me pull it up right here. All right, so I got a sample of these, of our three different. Let me zoom in a bit. This was just like a quick sample that I did. So this was a full fill. Full fill stitch, okay. The applique, and then this was our half half. It's a little bright right now. Let me see if I bring down the. All right. Um. So the reason why I did it on blue, I wanted it to be on something dark, just so I like to uh, do samples on colors that are contrast to each other, just so I could kind of find certain situations, okay? Uh, the design, usually this design is supposed to be on a white, just to make that blue that blue border kind of stand out, all right? But, all right, let me see. Let's take care of some questions real quick. We're gonna go over the settings real quick before that. I just wanted to show you a quick, uh, three different ways that we just did it right now. We did it through, um, applique, uh, full fill, and then the half applique, half fill. All right. Um, all right. Uh, 
And then youngsters, uh, does different brands of thread affect the design or does the thread type need to? Uh, for the most part, if you're using a uh, polyester, it should all be pretty much all similar. Okay, unless you have a specialty type thread that I really don't mess with the specialty type thread, but there is different thread that gives you a uh, uh, certain, uh, certain look, but that's all experimenting. But for the most part, if you're working with polyester thread, it should all work the same. Uh, oh, okay, good question, Bevy Jean. Uh, H, anytime I say H, uh, that's just the setting on um, the reshape object. That just lets me change nodes. All right. Uh, and then the half and half. Yeah, I like the half and half. It looks real clean. Okay. Um, especially here. I know sometimes on the camera it looks a little choppy, but when I'm seeing it here, like live, it looks real clean right here. Uh, and then TMG, what payment method do they expect? they accept all right all right uh what is the board uh border with three millimeters okay we're going with three millimeters here and then we'll look at all the settings right now right, this uh, yeah i agree i think the applique looks real clean okay i think when it's on white i, I like the white on white um, hey good morning eddie how you doing all right, all right. um uh, And this down. Yeah, baby, you want to see the half and half? All right, let me see if I can zoom in. Let me see. Here. This is uh, half and half, right? It's pretty clean. All right. Uh, yeah, and then I agree. I think metallic thread will look real clean, stand out. All right. And then. Uh, yeah, earlier I showed you my hat. So, all right. Um, but let's go into the settings now. Okay. Uh, all right. So, there are some stuff that I did too. But all right. So this was a fill stitch here. Okay. I just put it purple so we could see uh, the fill. Okay. Um, uh, so here I didn't mess with the, the, on the settings. Okay. Just the traditional spacing 40 length, 40 minimum, uh, minimum length 40. Okay. That's what the software, uh, I think, uh, fill stitch wise, uh, best results. Okay. Best results, uh, here. Okay. H. Okay. So Bevy, uh, when I was saying H, it allows me to pull out the nodes. So anytime I'm talking about the reshape, so it has the hot key of H here, okay? It just pulls out your um, your nodes and then lets you, okay, adjust your design like that. So here in this corner, since my angles is going at a 15 degree, I kind of chopped off this corner here, okay? Because these threads are gonna kind of push out outwards here, okay? And then, um, T. Let me see where my design was right here. Then I did bring up the design a tad bit up just to give us some spacing between our letters and the border. Because what happens if you don't allow too much, if you don't, if you don't give it enough space here, okay, it's going to kind of, uh, it could, it could lead to gaps and it just gives the design a little bit more space. Okay. Is there a little bit more space to go with? Okay. Um, our border here, 0.38. Okay. Um, special. Okay. Actually, is that a 2.88 millimeter? Okay. And then with our uh, pull comp, 0.17, it takes it to about three millimeters. All right. Um, so let's see this play right here. R. So here I put an underlay, a tatami underlay. All right. Um, 
So it's at a 90 degree underlay from where it's going to go. And with an outer, outer underlay too, just so it could hold its shape. Then it does its fill at a 15 degree. Okay. So up to here, right? So as you can see here, fill stitch, uh, 4,300 stitches here. All right. So it adds stitches when we do fill stitch. But there are some people that do uh, prefer for designs to be fully uh, all 100% stitched out. Okay, so if you're, just think about that, all right? When you are pricing and you're uh, adjusting for time, you are at 4,300 stitches here, okay? Then you do the border. So we do, we do a, um, a run, a center run stitch, and then a, zigzag stitch now i'll tell you something um what i like about the zigzag okay underline here this zigzag it'll show you this underlay when you're looking at your design especially the first time around when you're sampling out it'll tell you if your design is within boundary okay it'll show you is it did it come in too short did it come in too wide okay so you can see here with the underlay, okay? If something's sticking out or something didn't get covered enough, you can make a note of it. And then second round, you can make that adjustment here. All right. So that's what I like to see on the underlay. Uh, I always like to see my underlay because it shows me that zigzag, okay? Also for the applique, anytime I'm doing applique and I wanna make sure if that applique is gonna get covered, I like to see it through the zigzag. All right. Um, so here it's just going to run the zigzag all the way through. I mean, the border all the way through. And then it's going to add the, the text here. All right. Bam. And then you can see the way we're running our A's. Okay, so we all, here, uh, I put a uh, double zigzag, okay, just so, since it's on top of thread, since it's on top of our fill stitch, it gets a good coverage there. Okay, and then, same thing here, okay. And let it run. All right, this one's straightforward, all right? Uh, this was our fill. Let me change this to our white. Okay. And then I, once again, I'm going to put this, I'm going to put this file for free download. So you could try it out. So you could test it out and see how it looks. Um, let me see. Yeah. I like the, I like the 50, 50 one, the, the applique with the thread. Okay. It got some very good distinct look. All right. All right. Let's look at this applique one, the one we're going to do. Okay. So let's replay this one. Well, let's look at the settings first. Okay. So first, the first stitch that we have is our placement stitch. So this will tell us where to place our applique. And then this is the cut stitch. All right. So here I make it two millimeters. Okay, and then we go with our satin stitch. Okay, one thing that you can see here, I put it a, uh, I put a miter corner, just to give it a certain look. I didn't put the miter miter cor uh, corner on the on the regular fill one. I just left it as is, just so you could see the difference. All right. So if you're stitching this out on your own, okay, you kind of see the stitches. Both look good. It's just a preference of uh, it's just a matter of preference here. Okay. Okay. And then after here, let's see our, how big we are. Uh, okay. 2.88. You can always make it bigger. I think this size is pretty good and it covered, it covers it pretty clean. All right. Uh, and then for our lettering. Okay. So once again, this is how I went about adjusting our letters.
All right, hold on. This is the, let me go to the applicant one. All right, so here on the applicant one, I actually went 3.02 millimeters. All right, so three millimeters here. And on our letter, okay. All right, so this is where I chopped, I broke up our pieces. On our applique, yep, we'll, we'll, we'll replay right now just to see it. Okay, one thing I did add, I did leave the cuts here. Okay, I left the cuts, I let the machine cut it, but if you wanna take away the cuts, you could always adjust it. Uh, I just think it looks cleaner when the, when the machine did the cuts. All right, so let's replay this. All right, so it's going to do. All right, let me pause it here for a sec. So it does the, the placement stitch, okay, since it's the applique. As you can see here, we at first, we traced it here going through the bottom line, but I did pick it up, all right? So earlier I told you that I picked it up to give it space between this, this the letters and the border. Then here, we kind of moved it to the side a bit just so it could run also a little bit spacing, okay? It's little minimum stuff that nobody really notices, but us as embroiderers, we want to give space between our letters and that border just so we don't have anything crazy happening in between here. All right, here, after this, we place, we place it. And then one thing I like to do, if I'm doing uh, applique on hat, I like to start up here, top, top middle, just so when I'm removing it off the hoop, uh, the, the station, it gives me space to do so, all right. All right, then it's gonna run the border. Okay, there's the border right there. And then from here, it's just straightforward. Bam. All right. Cool. Cool. And then uh, let's see settings. I'm really just using underlay uh, center run zigzags. Uh, pool comp point thirty. Okay. A little bit more pool comp. All right. Um, and then youngster. Uh, out of the three examples, which method is the quicker? So it's this one. The the applique one, okay. As long as if as long as you cut, if you don't take forever to cut, but you don't want to be too quick where you're gonna cut your garment. All right, all right. Cedar, the size of artwork varies between constructed hat and unconstructed. Uh, I don't think so. For for the most part, uh, we can go up to three point two five. I think the most I've gone three point five. Uh, doesn't really. I think it's easier for a uh, structured hat to go bigger. Um, but for the most part, you don't really want to go too big on dead hats, on unconstructed hat, because uh, it starts looking a little funny. This one here, the one that I got, the design that I have here is a 2.6. I think it looks pretty good. All right. Um, all right, there's a good question here, uh, youngster. Uh, do you add stops? What I do, so here on the design, in order to stop, I just change the color, all right? I put a color and then the machine just automatically stops whenever there's a color change, okay? But you could you could add stops, but it's just easier for me to do it like that. All right, good question though. All right, let's go ahead. Let's actually stitch this out. I think I went over all the settings. Okay, there, there's really not no complicated settings right here. All right. All right, let's see. All right, we're an hour in. We're good to go. Um, let me transition to the GoPro here. Give me one second. And now it's just a matter of 
what color hat, what type of hat. Do you want to see it on a structure hat, on a dad hat? Right? There's always so many questions to go with. This one here, dad hat. All right. I think it looks pretty cool. So unstructured 2.6. I think it's a good size, 2.6. I think a little bigger. All right, it looks sharp right here. All right, I'll find a hat right now. All right, bam, bam. All right, let's transition. And what makes my life so easy Right, is this guy right here? Right, my Gen 2. Well, let me find a hat real quick. I don't know if I should go dark hat, white hat. Let me see. What... Uh, let's go white hat. Yeah, let's go white hat. All right, give me one sec. White hat. What's that? Uh, let's go with a 110. We got a 110. Here, let me see that one. No, but we got a 110. Let me get a 110. They're uh, adjustable. All right. Hold on. Yeah. No, but these aren't. The one ten. It's flex fit. That's fine right here. I'll... No, these are um no. All right, I get this. One. All right, let me get a large then. Yeah. All right, sorry about that. I'm just trying to find which hat. All right, so of course, there's always uh, options, right? We got uh, just regular structured, fitted, flex fit, that hat, unstructured. I think it would look real nice with this one. Or snapback, Yupong. This would look pretty sharp, too. All right, there's always options. All right, let me see. Uh, all right, right. Uh, then a uh, youngster, uh, when you say two and no, I was just talking about um, FlexFit. They make a hat called the 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 one ten. And then the 6227, this one here, 6227, my favorite hat right here. 
All right. Um, Aldell, thank you for the stop talk. Yeah, I just, yeah, yeah, bam. And then this is always a good question. Sadar, what's, what's your preferred hat to work with? So this one, the 6277. Um, also, it's anything flex fit, all right? Flex fit to me is the best. The best. Uh, Yupon makes the best dad hat, okay? I've tried mostly every dad hat that's out there, and by far, best quality right here. Um, and then snapbacks, Yupon makes cool snapbacks. Um, but yeah, FlexFit makes 6227, which is the, right, which is the FlexFit one here. But they also make a uh, adjustable, the 110. All right, let's go ahead. Let's, let's, let's hook this up. Uh, all right, I'll do it on this one. I'll do it on the 6277. All right. Um, All right, so structured, right? Structured always means that has the buckram inside. So that's already one layer, really, technically. That's kind of like one layer of, of, of stabilizer, all right? So on that hats, you want to use two. You want to use two layers of stabilizer. On structured, we could just go with one, okay? Make sure you can see all this stuff here. I just do this in half right here. That's my halfway point. And the Gen 2 makes life so much easier. Okay. I just put that right there on the half. I don't even have to mess with it, right? I don't even mess with it. Let's see if I could get you a good angle. Hopefully I'm not in the way right now. Put this around here. Just want to move. The headband here. Make sure we're centered. And that, to me, this is the best part of this hoop is that you could bring this part down. Okay. You just check yourself. So we're looking nice and good. Easy breezy. All right. Come to the machine right here. Let me adjust. I'll adjust this real quick. All right, I know I went pretty fast with hooping that hat, but let me know if you got any questions on the on the hooping portion. But let me just All right. Let's go ahead. And let's place it on. Get a good trace here. Let 
Make sure I go. All right, we're good right there. Bam, bam, got my colors straight out. All right, uh, let's go ahead, let's push start. All right, uh, so it's ready for, for me to place my uh, my twill. So I got a piece of twill right here. Of course, I don't wanna use all this twill. And this is um, my twill here. It has an adhesive, all right? So let me just cut it. So now that I have my placement stitch, I know how much I need to cut. So let me All right, so I could just cut this. All right. Um, all right. Then just peel this back. And if you're doing applique, I would highly recommend you to use um, this kind, okay, with the with the adhesive in the back, it just reduces what it does. It reduces. Um, it keeps all your stitches within, all right. If not, if we didn't have this, we would have all this fuzzy stuff all over the place. Okay, so now place this on top. Give it a nice little push here. All right, push start. Wait, let me just verify. Yep, it's good. Wow. Ah. All right, hold on. That that didn't go. All right, right now I'm supposed to cut it, but I didn't like the way it, it made that last turn. All right, because let me see if I can show you here. All right, I had this little part right here. I didn't I didn't lay it flat enough. All right, so let me turn the camera. See if I can show you. All right, so really, let me just cut this. I could probably remove those top one. All right, we're just gonna cut this. Should be an easy fix. I, I should be able to take out those top stitches. All right, just take your time when you're cutting this, all right? Just so you could get some good, clean, tight cuts. And then I think the secret in applique cutting is picking up 
picking up the the excessive so really what it is is this part here uh, usually I got my I have my um, these my chopsticks usually I'm using my chopsticks here and I'm pushing down as that stitch is coming down but I was kind of doing something else at that moment but we could just take out these stitches so I'm going to take out these stitches real quick So it's no 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 big deal in this in this scenario just because it's in this in this area right here by itself and these stitches they're gonna get covered with the sand stitch though so. Go to the light. All right, give me one second. I'm just um, taking out these top stitches. I just have the light right here, so. All right, actually what I'm gonna do, let me show you what I'm gonna do, just so. We're just gonna go ahead and take this off. Okay, we're gonna run it again, again. All right. Just pull this off and this part, and the reason why we can take this off is because our stitches are our sand stitch is gonna go over this. All right. So now we know. Okay, when we place that first place that first stitch, we gotta be more aware. All right, so all I did was take it off, okay. It was just a run stitch on top of it, so it's not a big deal right now. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna exit. Um, I'm gonna exit out and run it again. So I'm gonna reset everything. All right, let's do it all. Let's do it all over again, right? So I'm still using the same hat. All I did was take off the that applique. Okay. Um, all right, let's go ahead. Let's run it again. And I do have some threads still attached, which I could take off afterwards. And really, in real life situations, like stuff like that happens, and it's just a matter of uh, making little minor tweaks. All right, let's go ahead. Let's um, just trace this.
Oops. All right, good to go. So we're going to do it all over again. Let's go with the run stitch. Let me see if I could still use my other piece that I had. All right, what I'm gonna do, slow it down real, real slow. Oh, sorry about that, I had that camera all pointed. All right, so I just run a run stitch right now. Just use this piece right here. All right, but now I'm gonna use my handy chopsticks right here. Okay, slow it down. All right, good to go. All right, we're back on track. Okay, back on track like nothing happened. Now, let's do the same thing. We're just going to cut this. Okay. So I think when I did it earlier on the dad hat, it was straightforward. I didn't have to do any, um, I didn't have to push or adjust anything. Now, what I would tell you is whatever you do, do not put your hands or your finger trying to adjust your, um, your uh, twill, okay? You always wanna use um, your, uh, your tweezers, okay, these here. I like these because they run flat here. So it allows me to put my tweezers flat and push. All right, what I like to do when I cut twill, I like to cut little portions here. So as I'm cutting, this piece falls off. Okay. And the secret is always pulling up tight. Kind of doing this quick, but you want to really do this carefully. I do have a three millimeter um, sand stitch going around it. So even though I want it to be as perfect as can be, okay, it does allow me to have a uh, some room of not being perfectly cut. All right.
Oh, all right. Let me change my battery. <laughs> all right. My battery died. Hold on. Let me just change that out real quick. Change my battery real quick. No. All right, well, I'm changing the battery. Let me see if we got any questions. All right, appreciate that, uh, youngster. Hit that like. All right. Uh, now, which adhesive did I use? So that's from uh, Twill USA. This one already came with um, with the uh, adhesive already on the Twill. You can also purchase just adhesive by itself, and then heat press heat press it afterwards. And then. Uh, Baby Jean, have you used the Ooptech pocket clamp? Uh, no, no. Um, I do want to get some, but I haven't really had a project to really need it. But that's something on the to-do list. Then appreciate that, Jelaine. Okay, thank you for the support. And also, Sadar, I want to thank Sadar also. He sent a uh, super chat on the Cash App. Appreciate that, Sadar. All right, um, TMG, Romero, could you talk about the parameters? Oh, yeah, 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 we'll talk about that right now. So it's just some uh, changes. The y-axis, I moved it to an 80. Uh, and then youngster, is there uh, patches on hats? Is that more work or the benefit to it? Now, this is a good question, all right? So while I'm setting this up, I'll get on this right here. Um, to attach patches, to attach patches onto a hat using your embroidery machine, it's it's pretty difficult, all right, to nail it 100%. Now, if you're not about getting it 100% correct, then there's no problem. But if you're trying to nail it 100% perfect, where you want that stitch to go right over your satin stitch perfectly, it's pretty difficult. Uh, I found it easier just to create the patch and heat press the patch. Uh, that's the level that I go. But if I do want to attach it and stitch it, stitch on it, I would I would get a post bed embroider machine and manually manually stitch um, those stitches. But I wouldn't use the embroider machine to attach patches unless you do it like applique style, kind of like what we're doing right now. But it is a lot. It is more work than what's necessary. All right. Let's see if that worked. All right. Back on track. All right. And then Max, I really enjoy seeing the live soul outs and seeing how to assess and address issues. Yeah. 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 Like I'll be honest. Stuff happens. Okay. Um. I know a lot of times here on the channel, even on YouTube in general, you don't really see stuff, right? You think everybody's stitching perfect and you think you might be the only one that has issues, but I guarantee you everybody goes through something. Every project has a story and just like right here, right? We had to, uh, we had to uh, make adjustments, okay? And there's always lessons learned every time you do a project such as this one, okay? Now I know that hats. It was pretty straightforward when I did mine earlier this morning. No, no issue. The structured, okay, wants to act a little different. Sometimes you got to uh, adjust as situation stuff happens. All right. Um, okay, this is a good one from Bevy Jean. Find out what sticky twill makes my machine dirty. There's a uh, there's two types of uh, there's two types of uh, adhesive. There's so only adhesive that could that could really make your needles real gummy. Uh, I went through the same situation when I was going through uh, when I was doing applique, um, but 
it could be that reason that you have to use the 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 one that's only used for uh sewing and heat pressing so that might be a reason okay um And then, yeah, this is another good one right here. Should you use your heat gun to help adhere? So in my situation, I have a hat heat press. So I just use the hat heat press to adhere it. Uh, if you don't, probably your best bet would be to use a uh, uh, heat gun and then just kind of use something, right? Maybe not your hand, but something that you could apply pressure when it's nice and warm to kind of push down onto your hat. All right, good question. All right, let's go ahead. Let's finish this stitch out. Um, all right, back on track with the GoPro. Good to go. Put it back. Should just snap in like nothing. There we go. Click, click. All right, and then parameter wise, once I'm done with this, I, I could exit this the screen and, and show you how to go about. Can't tell. I still have some thread from the earlier one. All right, let's go ahead. Now it's going to do the uh, sand stitch. So here, oh, sorry. So here, what I'm looking out, I'm looking for to make sure that um, The sign stitch covers my applique. All right, let this one run through. I know it's a little bright on the GoPro. I think it looks a little better right here. So, so far, uh, my thoughts on applique hat, I really haven't worked on applique hats too much, um, but what I can say, I think doing it on a dad hat, unstructured, it was a whole lot uh, smoother, uh, less, less having to monitor that uh, the cut stitch line, Okay, but we'll see how it looks right here with structure. Thank you. 
Hold on. Got this long one right here. The blue one. Let me see. Looking good. All right, so handmade, you have a good question right here. On the topic of parameter, could you in a future video show how to set parameters in the eight and one? Okay, uh, one thing about using the eight and one, what I do, I just use the hoop that closely matches whatever uh, design I'm doing. So I've never, I've never changed the parameters for my eight in ones. I've only selected the correct hoop to match the design size. Like if that makes sense. So I could talk about it in a in a video how to go about doing the way I do it. Uh, the only thing I've ever changed on parameters is for hats, and it's one number. Actually, yeah, one number. Yeah, one number. Oh, no. I think this, rather cut this right now. Uh, this this machine this uh, machine here, we use it nine. I would say 99% uh, puff. Like mostly all our hats, I would say 99%. So the the tension setting is set for 3D puff. So we might get long tails. All right, so far, so good. Let's go ahead, let's do these bars. All right, let's just run out here. And then what I'm gonna do, I don't have my heat press, I don't have the heat press uh, turned on right now, but later today, I'm gonna heat press this hat since it has the adhesive in the back. And just, what I'm seeing right now, if you see the left-hand side, yeah, you could see it here. On the left-hand side, you see how the twill is kind of coming apart. Hold on, let me get a better view. Here. Yeah. I'll show you what what's happening right there. This one's running right on the center seam. So that one, that one stitch, I don't know. But it's doing a pretty good job on this center. This is like dead center. Two more bars.
All right. All done. Let's go over something real quick. Just um, let's take this off. Before. All right. Uh, let me see. Um, embroider. Exit here. Let me reset. Uh, I always reset the, the cap frame. All right. Uh, embroidery parameters. Uh, I always forget where this is at. Escape. I always forget how I go about changing. No. Oh, there it goes. Frame. All right, let me see. Let's see if I can show you here. So here, where it says cap, this is the only change I've ever done. The Y size. So these were the numbers. 46, uh, 46, 72, 260, 82, 0. But I think this 82 is the only one I changed. 72 on the Y center, Y size, 82. That's the only two changes. I don't know if it's too bright right there. Okay, but that's how I go about changing my parameters. Escape. All right, all right, let's go ahead. Right. So this was the first one that I did my my um the dad hat one right, which came out with no issues. All right. Now this one, there's a couple of lessons learned on this one. Okay. Let me just blow air on it. All right, still got it on the cap right here. All right, a couple things that I've seen here. We could clean this thread out right here. This was on the center seam. But here, everything looks clean, okay? Everything came out clean. The only thing I see here on the side, okay, we have uh, the twill was kind of shredding. Could be two reasons. All right, I gotta I gotta see which needle is on that one. Okay, I don't know if the needle was too big because uh, maybe it's a 80, uh, 85 needle, which may be too big. And what I would say, if you're putting your twill, put it at an angle. Okay, put it at an angle where you're uh, where it's not perfectly lined up. That way, when these um, sand stitches come. They're not pulling, okay? They're not pulling in. Now, in my situation, I'm going to be good because once I heat press this, okay, once I heat press it, that twill is going to adhere, okay? What's going to happen is that twill is going to adhere, and then this part I could just clean up easy, all right? But this, this thread here, that's how easy... This one here is an easy fix. All right. What happened here is this middle part. This is when it kind of, um, this is the center. So it skipped a stitch right at the center. All right. But overall, okay, overall, looks real clean. Okay. You always want to make sure that center, perfectly centered, going down right here. Okay. Overall, all right. I'm I am gonna put this file. I'm gonna put this file for um for download so you could try it out. All right, but this one here, this one here is straight money right here. All right, and then here was the three samples. So you could sample this out. So far, out of the samples that I've done, the dad hat with this one, 
Okay, it's my favorite one. Later today, I am going to try out the 50-50, the half applique, the half um, stitch out, okay, which you could try too. All right, so let's see. All right. Uh, all right, so real good uh, training today. Okay. This might be my favorite hat. It's been my favorite hat, but I've been using it like this throughout this whole time. But now that I, I have my design right here, okay. All right, uh, out there. I was worried how this would finish since the sewing did not start center out. Yeah. So the uh, reason why it works, because since we put that twill on top, okay, um, it's that, that foundation, that bottom part is set real strong at that point. And then uh, Baby Jean, speaking of puff, yeah, I think this design would look real good, 3D puff. So I might do that today or tomorrow. Turn it into 3D puff. Yeah, this might actually look real good on 3D puff. So we're gonna have to see how that looks. All right, salty gravy. All right, appreciate that. TMG, thank you for sharing how to change the parameters. Yep, that's the only parameters I've ever changed. Um, other than that, never changed any. Just my Y axis. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Um. Real good training today, okay? So there's always multiple different ways to uh, digitize items, designs. There's always different ways to go about doing stuff and there's always lessons learned, okay? There's always lessons learned um, when working on stuff, okay? Such as in this situation, we ran into scenarios, different scenarios of what to do, what, what things to change, all right? Um, always, the, the one thing that that we learned today, okay, especially what I learned today, is here, I usually do this as a habit, is move my um, move my my applique at a uh, at an angle to avoid, okay. But that's the good thing about working with twill, that's heat that has an adhesive, okay. It's gonna adhere to this, and this part here would get cleaned up. Okay, but if you don't put if you don't put uh if you don't put the sticky stabilizer or the adhere the adhesive on the back, okay, you might not be able to get away with that. All right, so just things to kind of think about when you are working with applique. All right, all right. So I want to thank everybody for hanging out today. If you have any questions, if you are here on the replay or any type of question whatsoever, make sure you leave it down below in the comments. That way we can all learn from each other and we all learn from different scenarios and different experiences. All right. So once again, catch everybody next week and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.